Good morning everyone. Today is a really windy cold day, so let's see if I can make it through this. But today you and I are going to talk about validation strategies and which one I think makes the most sense at any given point in time. So let's get into it. Now, the most common validation strategies that you will find out there on the web that are going to be something like pass like traditional sessions where you use passwords and usernames and something of that nature and you are going to find that there's a few trendier ones that are for the most part are going to be something like json web tokens or jwt i think you've seen that abbreviation somewhere maybe and oauth so what are the differences between these three different strategies? Well, the first and foremost difference between them is... Well, let, let's just define what they're intended to do. First and foremost, authentication is just the way that you figure out what user that's visiting your app, your, using your product, is associated with what account. And that's what all of these three are doing for you in their own way. Now think of it this way if you have a let's say a password and username strategy where you yourself ask you have a login form virtually and you ask your user for a username and a password they enter those credentials you check them against the database and make sure that there's a registered account associated with that in, in those credentials and then you start up a session or you give them a token or somehow you you notify them that they are logged in and that you and then from that point on you track that they are actually in a logged in state so that they can access restricted resources associated with their account that's the same thing that well, virtually what's going to happen if you use any of the other two strategies it's just that the way that you provided this functionality is a little bit different so we covered the first one that's what a username and a password strategy is all about so let's t talk about json web tokens well a json web token is virtually just an a way for you to encrypt information well not really encrypt but virtually you get a request from the user to validate that user rather a request for validation and then you create virtually a hash that you send back to the user that contains the information that you want that user to have in order to have a valid session virtually and in simple terms the idea is that you would instead of using something like a session for example where and in a session you keep all that information on your server that's very common in traditional web applications where your usage logs in you create a session and you put a session cookie on the users side of things usually in the browser and when you've done that you you know you can whenever there's a request to the system you can simply in your code check if the user is logged in if they have let's say that you put a user id on the user session now if they have a user id you know that they're logged in right really efficient and the same thing goes for json web tokens you simply set the user id of some sort and then you know and then the, it's on the user side of things to make sure that that token is always included when they're making requests to your system really nice right really efficient now then you have oauth where a third party such as google or github or facebook or somebody else provides that service for you in virtually what happens is that somebody comes to your web page you make a request or rather you yeah virtually that's what you do you make a request to facebook for example and you tell them hey i have this user that I need to log in and you have a token that you create on your side of things you send that to to google or sorry to facebook and then your user gets directed to virtually to uh, to their own login page where they basically have to validate through google they log in on google or facebook's side of things and they t so that they have a this is where it gets a little bit conf confusing for beginners so basically what happens is that you get a token on your side that you create a token you send that to facebook so that you can initiate initialize 
a valid an authentic uh, authentication flow for the user the user then goes to facebook through a redirect or something of that nature they log in v facebook and google validate that that the user is associated with the correct information that the, you know they do the username password thing right then they send a send the response data to you in other words if you have requested say the user's use email and username or whatever you information you ask for they're going to show to the user ask them to accept that this is going to go over to your system and then you get that get a signed authentication token and you get that information and the signed authentication co token is now going to be on on your user side of things so that you can basically start up a session and you know that the user is logged in if you wanted to that, that's in general terms how these things work now there are pros and cons with each of these these approaches and from my perspective i think that you should think about it this way at least this is the way that i think about it so Let's talk about traditional username and passwords. Now, the beauty of username and passwords is that it's uh, it's probably the, it's one of the more flexible things you can do. And when I mean flexible, I basically mean that you it's a very established pattern. It's very common and. I would say that the biggest drawback with it is that it requires a lot of work. And now you'll ask me, oh, what do you mean, Frederick? How can that require so lot, much, a lot of work? Well, if you compare to the other two ways of doing this, or rather, JSON Web Tokens is kind of probably the same type of issue, really, depending on your validation strategy. Usernames and password needs to be, uh, you need to have secure storage for it. You need to support registration. You need to support for the most part, sending out a an email to validate that the user has actually, uh, depending on how secure you want to be, but you have to be able to send out email changes, you need to have editing options, there's all kinds of things that are associated with allowing it to, to storing your user's password. And from my perspective, usernames and password is today really only it, it only really makes sense to me to have that as a fallback it's something you do in or either if you want to have something really really simple and really really quickly without any type of integrations to like facebook or google or some other oauth provider right so th that would be my first choice if i'm doing something that is going to be dirt simple or I see, and I don't care about all that other stuff that I was just talking about I just want something to play with and when it comes to the differences between JSON web tokens and regular ses session cookies and stuff like that I would say that I w for a traditional web application I would stick with sessions because they're very simple and unless you have a distributed system or something like that where session actually ses sessions can get really really tricky if you have large clusters of your application running because then all of a sudden if you have so if you have four or five containers that all run your same application it gets really tricky to make sure that it's, the session is synchronized across all of those applications at the same time that's where JSON web tokens become really really useful I would say JSON web tokens are my favorite validation strategy in two scenarios number one is if you have a really a big distributed system as I said they are really nice in that scenario the second scenario is if I don't have a traditional web application it's just an API let's say it, if it's just an API something that other other programmers really really use in order to grab data or whatever they're doing then it's also very nice because you don't really want a web interface to log a log somebody in for this you really only want to be able to have a rest endpoint or something like that where they can send their credentials or they they have api token or whatever and they get a validation token back and then they can just keep on using it it's very it, it basically it becomes a stateless thing you don't have to have a session on your side of things you can simply include everything you need on the in the json web token and have and put all that work on the client side of things and i think that's really nice and when it comes to oauth i would say that the beautiful thing about OAuth is that from a user point of view, it's very easy to just have a button where they can click whatever provider they have. Almost everybody in the world have one of these accounts at least. 
So what's, I actually went so far that when I started my own startup and so forth, I don't even support in my first, in, at the profile, co since we're in a profile concept level, I don't even support username and password because of what I said earlier, because it requires a lot of extra effort to get that working nicely. So using something like OAuth, it's very, it's very convenient. The user just clicks a button and if it's Google, Facebook or whoever they're using, and I can get all that information, easy peasy. The one thing that is a little bit tricky with that is that when you have a, use, a logging flow where you have a username and a password that you yourself provide, you can always be sure that you always have all the information that you need in other words, if you need extra, because you can't really trust that all the information that you could possibly want is going to be included when you have a third party because they are in charge of the data. So let's say that I want my logging flow or my registration requires, me, requires my user to input username, password, but also the gender of the person or something of that nature. That's not something that you can trust that Google and Facebook are going to provide to you. So you might get a situation where you have a little bit of inconsistency in your data. It's happened a lot for me, especially when I use Facebook where my, I want the profile image, for example. And sometimes people have a profile em image, sometimes they don't, so I have to kind of handle that. So, you know, if you need to own your own data, you shouldn't use OAuth. But if you just want something to be very convenient for the user and for you, because there, it doesn't take much in terms of time to set this up, then this is a really nice solution. And you, you, I mean, it takes a fraction of the time to do OAuth versus what it takes to create a, a really nice traditional username password setup so yeah those are my three tips i would say use username and passwords with session and stuff like that in a standard standard web application where you you for whatever reason you really need to be able to control all the data that is coming in, in at registration time use json web tokens for distributed systems or if you use a, if you're building a pure api for somebody else and use oauth whenever else possible because it saves a lot of time and it's it's fairly it's very well established and a very good user experience hope you have a great day